Singer 301A motor rebuild, the end is now the start. And I say that because this is where we ended up at the end of the last video when we finally got to the bottom of the motor and got that bearing and the spring out of there. So I say the end is uh, the start because now this is where we're starting to put the motor back, the 301A motor back. And I've got the parts laid out here so that um, we'll be in good shape to get the motor back together. And I've already located the, the, the plug and pedal and uh, once we get it put back together, we'll be able to give it some energy and uh, see, see what's going on. One of the things that I have to do in particular is the commutator. And even though this is not bad by any stretch of the imagination, there are a lot of lines on there. These commutators are very thin. Um, you know, they're sparsely populated. Uh, nonetheless, I do have some 1500 grit sandpaper for that and for that also. And so that's what I'm going to be working on shortly. We'll see some of that as I put the, as I put this motor back together. So that's what this video is about. We're going to put this motor back together and uh, I'm really enjoying this. I hope you, you gals and guys are too. And remember, we're here to learn and we're here to have fun. That is where we're able to insert grease into the wick that is in there. There is a wick that is in there and it goes in here and it's sticking out just a little bit, maybe like a sixteenth of an inch or an eighth of an inch, somewhere in between there. There it is right there. There, see it's sticking in, sticking out, sticking in. And so I'm going to try and remove that and grease it. Well, remove it, maybe clean it a little, and then fill the wick with grease, and then reinsert that wick right back in there, leaving that little part stuck out so that it'll lubricate the, the bearing. Pretty cool engineering, huh? All right, what I'm trying to see is if we can see that wick right there there and it is right there and I just pulled it out oh no that's the that's the wick off the bottom off the bottom of the bearing that was what I wanted to get out anyway but what I'm still working on right now is getting this wick out and greasing it so it looks like I'm able to okay it's coming out just gently I don't want to tear it you know that's the nice thing about this little shrimp skewer it is wood now i do have a small pair of curved needle nose pliers right here and there's the wick there so and there's the bottom wick if i can call it that because it's also to it will also its purpose obviously is to also absorb grease to keep the bottom part of the ball from contacting the the Bakelite housing. You know, this is the Bakelite housing. It feel, it's a synthetic, it feels like plastic, but uh, that's what it is. So there's my next two little projects. I'm gonna, uh, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grease those. You know, it's gotta be grease. And grease is time delay released oil. You know, grease is essentially oil, but it's, time delay so it lasts for weeks or months or maybe even you know i'm sure we we stretch it more than that so anyway that's the next project get these little dudes done and uh, then after that i'll start on the commutator and uh, that part of the engine so i'm going to get the grease which i have right here of uh of triflow uh grease and oil I've had good fortune with them before and all I'm going to do here I am just going to spot a bit of grease down there at the bottom well it's sticking out but it won't quite fall so I'll give it a, an assist because I want to get some grease down there and actually before I do that I'm just going to take this and grease it up which has to be done anyway correct? correct? you guys are always correct Hey, I'm just the guy that sweeps the floor and turns the lights out. 
<laughs> so now it's just a matter of getting this, that one, back in there. So I'll see if I can get it down there and then I'll get my wooden little prod. See, it feels like I gotta kind of raise a little bit. Okay, yeah, I think we're, see if that, well, this is going in good. And I can kind of tell, I don't know if you guys can see, but I can kind of tell that it was sticking out from about there. So I'm gonna put it into about there. I certainly don't wanna bury it in there because then I'll have to push it out from the other end. So I'm happy with that right there. And actually, I'm just gonna take just a tad out. And then this greasy round guy over here, I wanna drop a little more, I wanna drop some grease down in the bottom where he go, where that goes. So, oh geez, I hope I didn't knock the wick in. No, I didn't, I can still see it there. There, so that's in, the wick is in, in the wick tube, and then that bottom wick is in. And so that's greased. That's as far as we can go with that. And next we have our, our round bearing and uh, we're gonna get it in there like that. And then I'm gonna get the spring and I'll bring it out. And so that's gonna go in like, like that. What I want to do next is I want to line up the, the bearing, the ball bearing down there. So I'm just gonna put the, the axle or the spindle inside the, the hole in the ball bearing and then put the case together correctly and it should line up. And then I'll put the spring on there. So I've got that like that. Now I'm gonna take that off and now I wanna get the spring, spring on. And what we see in here is a tab there and a tab there. So that's where I want the spring wings is to go under those two little tabs. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the one in, lay the spring down, and I've got the one tab in. As I said, I have the one wing in that tab right down there. And now that one, I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the needle nose pliers, and I think I'm gonna be able to push it in down there, but we'll see. It's been a while since I did one of these, so let me have a go at it. Couldn't get it in because I was trying to put it in the wrong way. Okay, I'm gonna put the one in already. Like that, put the spring on there. So what I need to do is I wanna push this, push them both down. I've got the one inside already, so I've gotta push that one down and in. I'm just going to try and use my thumbs and see if that'll be enough to, to get it in. I, so I will say it is somewhat, you know, it is a bit of a test. But I don't want to turn the camera off because that's when it always works, you know? Well, we'll have another go at it. Have another try. By golly, it's in. Yep, it is snapped in. Is it snapped in that side? I think so. Yep, it's in. And then I'm just going to line it up one more time. Like that. So, so the bottom bearing and the bottom bearing retainer spring are in. Now, my next job is going to be to clean the commutator and that thing there. Tidy that up. I have some 800 grit and some 1500 grit and so I'm gonna cut off a piece of the 1500 and a piece of the 800. Commutator. And that. Yeah. 
So, and this is, this is somewhat of a non-heavy duty procedure. Like, like it's not heavy industry. It's kind of a gentle job. Because that copper is so thin. And, you know, hurtable. So that is 1500. I'll put that one there. And now I'm going to cut off a an 800 and on the back of this one it says wet dry well we certainly don't want to get anything wet so we got the 800 and the 1500 well is that long enough barely so i'm going to let this go really slow for like you know 15 turns or something one two three four five six seven eight nine so that's fairly quick right there and let's see what that did. I don't know that, I think there has been some improvement. And if you look at the paper, there has been. So, let me try this 800. But like, you know, it doesn't have to be for, you know, we're not here for a long time doing this. It's more for a good time, you know. Booty. So that went around a few times and when it jumped there it was because I had pulled a little tighter on the on the paper. And you know, I can see it has improved, especially with the 800. I'm going to give it another shot with the 800 for half a minute or whatever. I think it's getting better, and I wonder if I'm just going to stop right there. And I am going to stop right there. I do want to do some on here as well, so I'll get ready for that. Okay, I want to give it another little go, and I've been a little more generous with the sandpaper. And this is 800, so we'll try that because I want to get it just a little bit cleaner. You know what I'm looking at there? I'm looking at that, that gray area right there, kind of like between there and there. So I'm hoping if I use that, that I should be able to cover it all. And I guess I'm going to have to be a little bit brave. There, I think that's good enough. So I'm gonna let it sit there. Now I do wanna get some work done on there too. So I'm gonna to have to reposition a little bit. Now take a close look here. I wanna show you that right there. And that discoloration is some, well, it's discoloration. I don't know if it's rust or what it is. The only, substance I had applied to that was electronic contact cleaner. So what do I need to do? I need to get a piece in there, but you know what? I'm just going to hold that in there like that. And then I'm going to, well, maybe I might have to do something a little different. There. So I'm turning the spindle with my right hand at the bottom there on the worm screw, worm gear, and that's how I'm doing that. And I'm not applying a lot of pressure because it's too difficult for me to. And that's fine, I mean, it is 400. Let's see what we got already. You know what? <laughs> 
that's kind of done it. Like, it's pretty shiny. But I can still see a little bit of discoloration. And I don't know if that's like from days of your, like from days gone by. But I'm going to try some 800 just because, you know, I've got the tools. And I'm not applying a lot of pressure with my thumb and my first two fingers, or well, my first finger and a half, my first two fingers. Trying to move it up and down a little bit just to give it an even application, you know. So I'm happy with that. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to clean that, that uh, worm gear. So I have that small wire brush, and it is stainless steel. So it's not brass, it's fairly hardy brush. Well, I guess we got to stop that from rotating. So I'm just, you know, nice and gentle, steady as she goes. But, you know, I'm, I mean, restoration was not my, my vocation in life. And uh, I kind of picked it up along the way. And I, I must say that I, I really enjoy the learning. But nonetheless, it's done. Now I'm going to take that 800 grit paper right here and start giving this a bit of a sand to knock the dust off of it. I'll get real brave. What's that? Is that 400 or 220? That's 400, that's 220. Let's try this 220. This 220 deal. An electric contact cleaner. So, but I really enjoy the learning. I'm having a lot of fun. And yeah, sometimes I make mistakes and then I have to fix them. <laughs> kind of like life, isn't it? <laughs> Hope you're all having a great day, having fun, staying safe. Me too. So here I'm going to sand these a little bit with 220 grit, just to rough them up a bit, just to knock the dust off. Push that out a bit. There, a little is a lot. They're really small, so. So that was about 20 uh, passes on each one. And these, I'm just gonna hold them and then kind of rotate it and in and out a little bit. And there's no real discoloration or varnishing or anything like that. Now is I wanna get the wire casing in there and we can see that these posts, these two posts, A and B, have to go in these two holes, A and B. And these two wires, the brush wires, or the tube wires, whatever you want to call them, they have to go down through the, through the openings. So, so that's what we're going to do now. And the coil... Does it go? Yeah, it goes in this way. It has to. It can only go in that. Okay, I got the one kind of sticking out through there, right? Where's my other one? It's right there, and I need it to be there. It is together, <laughs> and uh, so.
so I am going to put one of the screws in will not fit there there's a difficult one and an easy one so that's the difficult one so let's go to this side and see if we can do the easy one There, that side, it just slides right in, nice like. There, so that fully threaded knot is in there, just like this one is. And there's an issue here with the threading. That's all I can figure. Because when I took this out last time, there was a bit of a a torn thread at the bottom, almost like a wire sized kind of thing. And I should not really be having to use the screwdriver. Oh, there, see, it now, it took, huh, now it can hardly wait to get in there. I guess I found the spot that has the little flaw. <laughs> okay, we'll try that again. And the reason I'm doing this now is because it anchors that stud down at the bottom that the, you know, the, the covers go on, the screws that I put into the covers. So, so, you know, when it comes to putting the covers on, there's only gonna be two screws to do instead of four. And so that's done there. These guys I wanna check the cleaning on. And uh, the screws are okay, and the covers are okay, because they've been done at least twice. But uh, these guys, I just want to get a Q-tip and make sure they're okay inside. Okay, so here we go. And I had generously oiled both these tubes. And there's not much dirt coming out of this one. I'm glad to to report. Did I go into this one yet? Let's check it out. See if we can see some dirt down in there. But it's not bad. You know, but like I say, it got to soak in uh, some oil for a good while. And then it soaked in crud cutter for a little while, like a couple of days or more. So those are good. And I just want to look at these springs. And all I'm going to do with, I did not want to drop that oil container. twice and all I'm going to do with these guys is get a remember to shake the oil tab get a drop of oil on my thumb and forefinger oh I got two or three and so all I'm doing is just wetting the spring and I'm not touching that carbon block. And I need to get one of my many rolls of shop towels. There's four of them still on the shelf, but I have this new one that I'm opening right now. And uh, might need them in a minute. So I just want to kind of grab that oil that I just put on those springs. And we really don't see much. And then I'm just going to wipe the brush.
And I'm not putting anything on the brushes, not oil, not water, not card cutter, nothing. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Let's see this brush. It looks like to be the dirtier one. Oh, yeah, look at the action we're getting off this baby. Oh, this is the grimiest we've seen this machine so far. So, so they're ready. And the covers are ready. Tubes. And... Where's this guy? Is he trying to sneak back in there? There, we got him out. And then for these guys, they go in there like that, don't they? And then I have to get a Tube. <laughs> it's kind of funny. I'm trying to, there we go. I'm trying to get the spring in the carbon in and the thing keeps running away as I push in. Okay, so I've got the first one in, right? Like that. So I have to turn it this way. And then I'm holding it. I'm gonna push, there's a lot of life in these carbons. There's a lot of carbons there. And then I want to get it like that. <laughs> I did not want that to happen. And you didn't either. But look at how, look for the curve on the, on the head of the carbon, right? On the head of the brush. And try and line it up that way. And we want the stripe on the outside so we can see, right? And let me see if I can, oh, that carbon thing, where is it? There it is, there, there. Are we in? We kind of are. Well, that one's causing a bit of a... Okay. There. There. Boy, that's a pretty tough little spring, that is. So I'm going to have to take it out and get the... terminal in there. So that has to go like that. Like that. And that has to go like that. That's where the curve is. <laughs> it just flipped out of there. I caught it in my hand, but uh, you know, these are real, uh, 
There's a lot of fun. There's no two ways about that. And you got to be careful because they're so small and light with those little bouncy springs. Like they can, you know, like all of a sudden they're gone and it's like, where did it go? Okay, so that's the way I want it oriented there. And I want that to be oriented like that. All it takes is a little bit of practice. And what does practice take? A little bit of practice takes a lot of patience, doesn't it? Are we in? We're in on that one. That one is in. The carbon begins right there, and that's all spring. Pushed in, and there's the contact. Pick up the electricity, and I'm gonna put the cover on that one right now. Is that on? Sometimes, you know, not enough hands, but too many fingers. And now, it's already security to the other end. So it's just a matter of tight, snug this screw up. Okay. And now this end, just to make sure, yeah, that's nice and snug there. And then same procedure, we're gonna get this baby in and It's a little bit of a paint-by-numbers deal, but not much. There was a slot down there for that to, to go into right there. So it's in there now. And so now I want to get the tube with, I want it like that. I want that like that. So, and now, don't let it slip, Chubb. Don't let it slip, buddy. Bring it out, bring it out, bring it out, Tom. Okay, it's in there. So I'm gonna press it down a bit. See that oil wick is in the way. We're in, baby. We're in. We're in. There's the carbon and there's the spring. There's the cover, there's the screw, there. There, the motor's back together, and it's ready to be installed in the machine, in the sewing machine 301A. So it's back together, and it's rotating freely, both directions. Nice. I enjoyed that project, that little job. Alrighty. So we can see that we're gonna to have to put the motor back up in there, reconnect these wires to the motor, and then have to put the motor mounting bracket or blocking bracket or whatever. Whoops, I dropped it on the floor. Not to worry because what I did was I put the screw in there right and then I taped it so that I couldn't lose the screw so I know I have the screw so now it's time to get the motor in and put the the locking bracket the mounting bracket in place put the bottom in and then uh, we'll plug her in and see if we can take it for a whirl take it for a spin okay we've got a good shot of uh, the motor housing inside the motor so I'm just making sure that the um, these wires are out of the way okay so I gotta put the, the wires in first that's what I was thinking and 
I'm trying to think which was which. Well, it feels like it's seated on there because there's no ground. So it shouldn't make any difference whether the black is where it is or the black is where the red is. But, you know, I'll check and see. And why not? If you can, you know, check and see, then, then do it that way. So there's a the screw to get that protection device on there. And I've got the screwdriver right here. Now, I never did get a pedal with this 301A, and it is a, it's different from the, from the other 301A, because this one only takes one, one plug in the machine, and the other one takes two. Let me just turn this briefly because I'm playing with this, it's driving me crazy. There, that's in there snug. Now I'm going to replace the bottom. A nice shiny new bottom. Is that the way I want it on? So, <laughs> so I know it belongs on here. There we go. Here we are with the sewing machine. And I think I got a plug that should work. Well, it's plugged in and I'm not electrocuted. So we have power, but something is binding either on the motor Okay, so the motor is turning, no problem. You know what? The presser foot was up. And now it's working fine. <laughs> You know what, I'm really happy, I'm really pleased. Uh, what a great adventure for all of us if you're into little song, vintage sewing machine adventures like I am. You know, keep safe, have fun you guys and gals, and uh, keep watching if you've, uh, if you've hit the notification uh, bell, then every time I publish you'll be notified. And thank you for viewing, please like and uh, please subscribe. It helps and I appreciate your help. Ciao, adios amigos.